Why do I always forget the ending? Oh yeah. Got the base. What up, Buttons? It's your boys, Adam Stark. And Alan Roper. And we're going to ask you the question, what the file format do those buttons do? You I, know? Don't, I don't even know what file formats are. What are they? Tell me. All right, I will. All right. Well, before we jump into that, as always, we'd like you to um, like and subscribe. Do that little thing for us to help spread us to more people out there. It really does do a lot. I don't want to beg, but, you know... Please, please, P pretty please, Jimmy. Hmm, hmm. Puppy dog eyes. Hmm? Don't make me cry. I can cry on command. We're gonna cry <laughs> later in the episode. Whoa, whoa. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's gonna get so deep. Oh, <sighs> all right. Well, uh, let's jump into pick of the week. We're gonna kind of speed through some of this today because we're on a tight schedule. 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 Um. Sh Give yeah. us a little bit of an introduction. What are we What are we watching this week? So there's this cat. I I want to say it's pronounced Lubalin. L U B A L N. Um, he's super talented artist. Um, I came across some of his videos. He's got these internet drama videos where he just does short clips of um wherever he picks it up. These like texts, uh, from social media. These are real texts, and he makes songs out of these like conversations that happen. Whether it's on like things like Let Go or different like buying apps or just just conversations he's come across. I'm not exactly sure, but it's funny how he does it, and he's really talented. And if you look him up, he's actually got some really dope like videos and songs and stuff. Nice. So let's check him out. Cool. All right. <laughs> sakes <laughs> oh my god so that's a short one let's check out this other one of his oh, that's great he always reads the, the the misspellings you know i love it <laughs> my horse broke my toe oh dang she weighs over fifteen thousand pounds fifteen hundred <laughs> nope at another zero there's no way she can be that much You got papers on her telling us her weight The record for weight is 3,336 in England Okay, well, this, this horse isn't from here, Abby You can't be calling me a little Calling me a little Abby Papers in this video Oh my god, this Call is amazing. Me, yeah, it's real funny, don't you think? You haven't even seen this horse. This horse is bigger and huge. And any horse I know. And she ten times the size of yours. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's just a taste, man. He's hilarious. And his actual, like, you know, serious music is deep and introverted. It reminds me of like actually I don't even know, but like his like persona reminds me of like bass nectar back in the day with the long hair and then he comes out with something so unexpected when you hear his music it's like um i don't want to say like future or, or like post malone but it's in that new age vibe when he like sings and it's like very like sometimes it's hard to like follow what he's saying because he's like doing that new age thing but it's so good like he's right. so good of a singer anyway luba lynn check him out we'll have him in the show notes he's amazing definitely i will i will i will even add on to that go ahead and subscribe to him and uh, we're going to put a link down to his channel and to those videos um we i just subscribed the buttons channel to him because that that is just fantastic i love it awesome yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right, let's jump into what the file formats do these things do. 
There are so many file formats out there, and sometimes it can get really confusing. I actually just got contacted a couple weeks ago uh, by a friend who's trying to learn Ableton and kind of music productions. That was actually one of his questions, was what file formats do I use? What, are, what do all of these even mean? Where do I go from here? I'm going insane. I mean, he didn't go one that far. One more thing to learn. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's, it can get confusing because... Uh, I think the big ones uh, out there that kind of like w- like we'll go into more detail about this, but um, you know everybody knows MP3s on that, and you would think that since MP3, I've got those on my iPod, I got those on my phone, I got those everywhere. Everybody uses MP3s. You would think that those uh, would be suffice, but they're not. That's not quite what you want to be using. So I'm gonna not pass it producer. over. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna pass it over to Alan, and he's gonna give us a little bit more insight onto what each one of these file formats do. Yeah, I mean, this will be like a quick run of like what you could use, and you know whether you want to use it as a producer or not. But um, just think of file formats in in two ways. There's compressed formats and uncompressed formats. So in the compressed formats, there's a bunch. And, you know, it could get easily get lost in that. MP, just like iPods, Adam, don't exist. Um, <laughs> MP3s are, you know, you can you know download MP3s or whatever, and they're great for listening purpose, but they are part of the compressed loss, lossy formats. Um, MP3, AAC, AUG, Vorbis, which is less common. These are all part of the lossy formats. That means that, like, they lose data in the transmission. They don't decompress back to the original size and they end up smaller and, you know, some sound gets lost. So every time like an MP3 or one of these other lossy formats is exported and you keep exporting them, they degrade every time. Yeah. Not listening purposes, but so you, you export an MP3 and then you bring it back in and export it every time you're losing more and more due to the compression and just the fact that it's a lossy format that comes down to, you know, bit depth and sample rate. And we won't delve into that quite yet, but that's, you know, that's the reasoning is it's a lossy format. Like you don't want to use that as a producer unless you're just sharing a song with someone or whatever and they just want to hear it. Or if you have an early export that you want to send them an MP3 because it's easy to upload and it's small, fine. For listening purposes, unless you're a crazy audiophile, that's fine. Yeah. But as a producer and you want to export and later master or something like that, if you get stuck with a, uh, a file, this MP3 to try to master, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle and not, not, not really worth your time. Yep. So that's the lossy side of the compressed formats. Now there's lossless compressed formats. And I mean, there's, there's a few, but the only one really anymore that I would say matters is, well, there's, there's two that I would say matters, but one's not that big a deal. The FLAC format, that's the free lossless audio codec, lossless compression. It's free open source. It's more commonly used. Ableton actually has that as one of the exporting um, formats. And um, the other one is like ALAC, or ALAC, or whatever you want to pronounce it, but that's Apple's version of the same thing. Um, it only works on Apple devices, so it's a little bit limited. If you're a PC user or if you do things across platforms, you could have issues. You'll so probably stick- see a lot of those in uh, like o- older. I don't know if iTunes, does iTunes still do that? I know older iTunes used to, like whenever they, whenever you'd bring anything inside of your uh, iTunes, uh, uh, like playlists or things like that and build out your library, it would right. convert them all to the um, ALAC or whatever it's called. The a- it would a- auto do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, really, like, does iTunes even exist besides, like, for ringtones? Or I don't know who <laughs> uses iTunes. But so if you don't, you have an Apple device, which I do, but I don't use ALAC. Um, that's the other one. There's, so there's FLAC and ALAC are the only two that I would say are relevant anyway uh, if you want lossless compressed uh, file format. However, that's the compression side, the lossy and the lossless ones. So if you have FLAC, I mean, yeah, if you're going to use a compressed format to use for editing or mixing or whatever it is, um, I'm not mixing, but like mastering, then I guess flack would be the way to go. But like, really, you don't want to compress format for that anyway. So let's talk about the uncompressed formats. There's a few of these, um, but the most common one everyone knows is the wave format. It retains all the original data. It, it's ideal for sound engineers or you know producers if you're mastering or whatever. Um, the dynamic range is greater because it's not compressed. Um, you want to use higher, you know, bit rate and depth and all that. Um, but that's again, that's another conversation. Um, video projects, that's especially useful um, for wave formats, easy to sync. And if you're going to be syncing to film or, or whatever it is, because the waveforms are very easy to see because of the uncompressed waveform. 
feel like I'm repeating myself. <laughs> uh, you can see it, and it's easy to sync with like you know the visual. Um, another Apple format is the AIFF audio interchange file format. It's like Waves; they retain all their you know original sound, but they take up more space than MP3s. However, this is not a format useful for editing and mixing. And while Ableton does support that, it can be used, you know, great export if you're just using it for sound, especially if you have Apple devices. Um, if you're going to be doing something with that file more, you don't want to really use that as an export in my research. There's a couple other ones that stand out. PCM, pulse code mod uh, modulation. It's usually used for CDs and DVDs, so feel like I don't even need to talk about that. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's one of those things that it's it's a file format that's out there, but uh, in most cases for at least uh, um, n kind of normal music productions. I mean, if you if you work in big uh, studio surround sounds like stuff and you're com you're pushing things out in uh, what is it, 48, uh, then, you know, sure. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you might you I, might want to work in that, but you're probably not going to be working in Ableton. <laughs> right. I mean, for a while, it was thought to be like the closest you can get to capturing analog sound with the, you know, the, you know, bit rate, the bit rate and bit sample rate, bit depth. Can't talk <laughs> so dumb. Uh, however, that was until DSD came out. And this is something I've never used, but it's like more higher end um, top of the line audio systems that you're probably not going to come across very often if you're in the box like Ableton and you're producing from your computer. So, I mean, it's like uncompressed high resolution. That's the di direct stream digital. You may come across it at some point in your life. I hope not to. I'm good with WAV files when it comes to uncompression. So in the end, if you're doing production work and you're exporting something that you want to master or, or, or share or whatever it is, Wave format is realistically the way to go. So that's that. For compression, if you're just listening and stuff, really, you don't really need to use compressed files if you're doing anything other than listening, in my opinion. But of course, the MP3, you can go that way or you can go with the FLAC file for lossless. But I don't export anything except MP3s and waves. Waves if I'm doing work and MP3s if I'm you know just listening or seeing how it sounds compressed or something like that. Yep. So that's pretty much that. All right, so um, Adam's going to show us some visuals, you know, kind of talk about the spectrum, the frequency spectrum of some of these file formats. And um, the one caveat uh, for MP3 is that if you, the we talked about, or we said we'd talk about sample rate and bit depth, and, and we'll get into it more later, but if you export an MP3, which is one of the lossy formats, as a 320 MP3 or 320 kilobits per second or whatever, um, that's the closest you're going to get to like wave as far as one of the formats you can ex export under. And then with Ableton 11, uh, I think that's the only way you can export is a 320. If you go to buy music off beatport.com, you're always going to have that option for 320s. And 320s are a little bit smaller than waves, but they're bigger than your typical MP3s. Yeah, um, there's, they there's they still sound little, good. Yeah. And they're easy to like, like DJs will use 320s. So people that DJ, just DJ other people's beats, they'll go to Beatport or whatever place and they'll buy yeah. either waves or they'll buy uh, the, the, the bigger MP3s, which is the 320s. And that's just a little bit smaller of a file format. So a little bit easier to transport or, you know, transfer or whatever. So Adam's got a couple of those lined up, the different, uh, excuse me, the different sizes of MP3s alongside of a wave. So you can kind of see the difference and hear it as well. So yeah, so basically, uh, let's jump over there and check that out. So in Ableton here, I've got, uh, never mind these for a second. Uh, these are just spectral analyzers. You can use pretty much any spectral analyzer you want. I put four of them on the master so that we can kind of see these side by side. So we've got the same track through all of this, and uh, you can't really tell uh, from the waveform directly, but... Um, this is uh, this one's our wave. This is a 320 MP3. This is a 128 MP3, and then we compress the same song all the way down to a 640 MP3. So 64. Is 64. Thank you. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look at the wave here, and I'm gonna press hold. I'm gonna press hold on this one. This is why I like the the span uh, spectral analyzer, is you can do a bunch of cool stuff with it uh, for 
uh, testing and whatnot. So let's go ahead. So real quick, as as you go down from the top track to the bottom, the quality is diminishing. Correct. Down, right. So each yeah. one is going to be a The compression worse. is more, and we can actually see what they're doing, and then I'll explain kind of why they're doing that. Um, so the wave. We'll hold that. We'll stick this over here for now. Then what the holy majesus happened over here? Uh, we'll open that one back up here in a second. <laughs> All right, the 320. And we'll go down to the see you can't really you can't really tell a different too much of a difference there it is there but it's almost imperceptible uh, from what you are normally going to hear between and I'll play these actually I'll switch them back and forth so you can hear um, so let's go ahead and and do this. That's the three the three twenty MP three there's. Barely, like I, I don't think many people blind could tell you the difference between right. the two. It takes um, audio file for sure. Yeah. So now let's go ahead and we're going to drop this down to a one twenty eight, and we can see what the one twenty eight gives us. Already, I think you can you can see the difference in just the waveform. What's uh, what seems to be missing here? Uh, let's see if there's a trend going all the way down. To 64 and which one of our spans is not open this one so let's use this one and we'll go ahead and play from the same spot and I don't I I'm pretty sure you can hear that almost right away you can not only can you see a difference here but you can hear it let's listen to that one more time So muffled, but, more muffled. Yeah, basically, what's going on here is someone, someone, uh, super smart, a long time ago, uh, back in the '90s or somewhere around there, early 2000s, uh, ended up uh, discovering that a lot of stuff above 120 hertz and even up to about 120 um, kilohertz, sorry, kilohertz, is human range is it, we kind of lose that, and so most people aren't going to notice if you start dropping a lot of those off and in another episode that we'll cover later on it actually higher higher frequency uh, notes carry a little bit more energy and also carry a little bit more data so that compression for mp3 specifically end up taking it away from the uh taking it away from the high end of songs so this is why you see that that drop off right there and so major drop off of the high frequency yeah so here's our this one's our wave uh top left this one's our uh 320 uh top right and then bottom left is our 128 and the 64 bit is going to be the bottom right and so you can see kind of what's happening there and so all it's doing is it's basically taking that out of the waveform so that it doesn't have to uh compute those into ones and zeros and therefore makes the file size smaller so a compression. lot of yeah compression and there are different ways to do compression in and of itself again uh, uh bit depth compression completely other thing but i just wanted to kind of show you the kind of difference there so totally. and this has happened with alan and i before is someone gave alan uh some some mp3s that they had just bought offline from a producer oh gosh dude Come and on. This is this is what uh, when he when he gave me when he gave me to do some like uh, mastering on it, he sends over the prod we, we uh, exchange projects and I pull up the span and I see this like immediately and I was like, uh, what are you working with MP3s? And uh, I think he had actually given you waves maybe, or did he give you MP3s? I forget. Uh, Either depends on the track we're talking about, but I mean the guy was one of the first. Uh, one of the first. Well, I think he was, you know, ripping beats off of YouTube, or whatever, and like that's how well, that, that's how, he that'll happen. Couldn't get the stems. You yeah. got to get the stems, man. If, if you see this, studio, if you see stems. this, uh, if you take a spanner and you see this drop off, <laughs> uh, well, hopefully you don't. You won't even need this if you can hear it and you're using that 
I mean, stylistic choice, I guess. But if you can't barely tell, but you throw it in there, and you see this drop off, you're working with a, a mid mid to you know high end low uh, of your MP3s, uh, and it's going to be noticeable. It's not going to mix well. It's hard to cover this stuff back. It's hard to get that back. Period. Uh, from from that whatever you're using there, you're not going to get that yeah. back. You're You'll have to add more stuff in. So. Uh, yeah, that's something to kind of look out for, uh, for because it's going to affect their quality over time, especially once, uh, one like Alan said earlier, is once it's compressed, if you recompress it. So even if you dump this out as a wave or even a 320 MP3. It's already uh, affected. And yeah, it's already affected. So the next time that it's shared, copied, or anything like that, or especially if it gets compressed down anymore, all of a sudden this is gonna that one bad MP3 is over time you're gonna you're gonna hear it. You may not hear it right away. Maybe using just like a like a something like that, you're not gonna miss it. You're especially, limiting dynamic range. Yeah, if you're yeah, you if you're that. if you're if you're fixed in one area, you're not going to hear it. But uh, overall tracks uh or instrumentals, anything like that, if you're seeing this in an instrumental, um I mean, you kind of got to work with what you got to work with sometimes, but you can you can that's a that's a warning sign of somebody ripped it off YouTube like you said. <laughs> it, that's or, usually I mean, what yeah. it is. <laughs> Or you can buy something from a producer off of, you know, BeatStars or whatever, and maybe they don't even know, and they're giving MP3s True. as part of their stems, yeah. and then you're working with a subpar, uh, com, you know, from, audio yeah, right quality, off the bat. and then you're stuck. So, like, be wary of that, and definitely if you're exporting stems as a producer, do it the right way. Don't yeah. export MP3s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would say like once it once you finally once you finally like mastered and you've got everything uh, put together, it is really good to uh, working with the label. Um, one thing that I've uh, discovered is what they're what they're looking for is y you are going to be giving out MP3s because eventually in most of your iTunes, Spotify's, or, right. or wherever you're buying tracks you're like you said uh your beat ports or anything like that you're gonna be downloading a 320 mp3 um it's very but rare that, that is... you're actually gonna get a straight wave i shouldn't say it's very rare it's just usually a higher paid service or something like that if you're paying 99 cents for a song it's gonna be a 320 mp3 usually right and that's because it's for listening purposes and yeah. if you don't if you if you're a consumer you don't know the game like you know production side you're not thinking wave. You're like, what's a wave? So you just go right. for the MP3, and that's the more commonly consumed audio format. So for listening purposes, you know, whatever. You're if fine, you get 128, yeah. fine. Or 320s if you're DJing, cool. Yeah. But as a sound engineer or a pr producer in any way, when, you can get a wave. Yeah. File. When 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 creating something, try and stick with try and stick with waves as best as possible. Uh, for any uh, production stuff, you know, uh, or any uncompressed files that your DAW supports. Like, again, we're, we work mostly in Ableton. If you're not working in Ableton, just uh, check to see what files your supports. But majority of the time, it's going to be waves or high quality MP3s. Um, so just check them. That's kind of the big, uh, big point there. So in closing, yeah, uh, there's luckily in most DAWs, you're only going to be working with two file types, and that is MP3s and waves. Um, so, just getting to know those and uh, and kind of what those do are going to take you a long way. I mean, that's pretty much the that's uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. So, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, our Patreon if you want to become one of those. Become a Patreon and help us uh, evolve this, uh, this step it up, show baby. a bit more. We're stepping it up each time. We're trying. We're doing our best to do that. So you can become a part of that. And as always, we'll be back next week, every Wednesday, asking those questions. What those buttons do? You know. Bye. Drop the bass.